What's up ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my channel. What I do here is I break down the occult sciences and I break them down to a practical level so that you can use them and apply them in your day-to-day -day life and get real results with it just by simply being aware, okay? Um, so, first thing I'm gonna do is create a context of who I am. My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist fully initiated in the Kabbalah in its entirety, being the Sephiroth, the Tunnels of Set, and the Klipoth, okay? I'm studied when it comes to tarot and the archetypes, and I'm also studied when it comes to uh, planetary energies and astrology, okay? Uh, once again, this is just to create a context, just to let you know who you're getting this information from, just so that you know you're getting it from an actual practitioner somebody who's actually had experience and has initiated fully uh, into Kabbalah, which is a very profound system um, in regards to developing uh, occult power and occult awareness, knowledge. Um, so once again, yes, this is just so that you know who you're getting the information from, okay? So the topic of today's video, basic topic, straight to the point, but it needs to be understood. Okay, this topic needs to be understood, okay? This is something that is not too often talked about in the field of the occult, um, which I think fucks a lot of people over. It really does, it fucks a lot of people over. And obviously, you know, you're gonna do what you do, but um, this topic of today's video is extremely important to really understand, okay? Really important, and I wanna make sure that for the people that watch my channel and really take in the content, I want this to be very clear to all of you who are really absorbing this content that this is one of the most important aspects to understand uh, within the occult field, okay? So the topic of today's video is in regards to how far and how deeply should you be worshiping other spirits, okay? So if you want to know a little bit more about this topic of worshiping other entities, spirits, deities, angels, demons, whatever, if you want to know a little bit more about this subject, then stay tuned for the rest of the video. Okay, so let's jump right in. So, around the context of the video, what should you be doing in regards to connecting with other intelligent forces? Okay, being angels, being demons, being archangels, being archdemons, being any kind of spirit that you can connect with. How far should you actually take it with that spirit? Now, the answer to that question is, um, it actually depends. You know, I can't give you a straight, direct, this is the answer, this is always gonna be the answer. It depends, it depends, and a lot of it is intuitive, okay? A lot of it is, you have to feel it out, okay? Um, and you can gain tons of value from working with spirits. I mean, if you really think about it, you're working with a already programmed, built up energy. And especially when we're talking about spirits that have been uh, worshipped and worked with um, in the past, we're talking about energies that have developed their own intelligence, meaning they can literally communicate and interact with you in an intelligent way from our perspective. Um, so that's very profound, and you can gain tons of value from that, obviously. I mean, it's, it's actually not just tons of value. It's a part of the initiatory process. You literally have to know how to communicate with spirits if you are going to want to develop yourself in the occult field and begin to travel through uh, initiation if that's something that you're wanting to do, which I think is fun. I think is necessary um, if you're really going to be pursuing your highest potential. Um, that's literally what high magic is: is going through initiations. Um, obviously, there's a proper way to approach it, and there's you know, proper starting conditions that you would want to have getting into it. Um, and you also want to be aware that there's also a lot of false information that is out there to the public in regards to initiation. So before you just go and purchase your next, 
you know, a cult book coming from the Golden Dawn, the OTO, the Rosicrucians, whatever, Freemasons, whatever, before you just go and buy a book or buy one on eBay, Amazon, whatever, um, and start performing their rituals, I would highly recommend studying my channel a little bit because there are a lot of occult booby traps that are out there. And yes, they are intentional. Okay, they are placed in these books for a reason, and it's because um, when you really understand the entirety of the initiatory uh, Kabbalistic system, and then you actually initiate through the whole thing, you develop a large, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You develop a large ability, a, bit, a major ability to control the multiverse. Okay, now obviously to be able to fully initiate through this system, it's going to be very challenging. Okay, I don't want you by any means to think that this is a walk in the park, and I don't want you to think that people can just come across the knowledge and then they can gain access to this power. There are many people who have lost themselves trying to go through this initi uh, initiatory system. It is very challenging, it will challenge you on all kinds of levels. Um, but obviously, if you want great power, you need to have great responsibility. So that's why you will uh, be challenged on those levels and to those degrees. Okay, but there is an initiatory system that can lead to literally huge amounts of control over the mass collective consciousness, which literally can reshape uh, the multiverse we all are living in. Okay, and that it comes down to earth energies. Um, which are like the underlying uh, mechanisms that structure reality, uh, structure the consciousness of mankind. So, um, yeah, so with that being said, it's very important to understand that to pursue that level of initiation, that level of striving to achieve or to get in touch with your highest potential, which is high magic, right? Literally the, the whole goal of that is to achieve source, to link with source and fully uncover your soul and then ascend, ascend your soul and gain as much power as you possibly can. That's, that's what the goal is, okay? Um, it is extremely important to know how to communicate with spirits along that journey and for every sphere of initiation there are spirits associated with it and for every pathway of initiation in regards to the 22 um, major arcana archetypal paths there are spirits associated with those paths now when we're looking at the sephirothic side we're mostly looking at archangels angels and archangels when we're looking at the universe B side, the tunnels of Set and the clip off, now we're looking at arch demons in Ars Goetia. Okay, so the whole system of initiation is, is very balanced uh, in those regards. But obviously, as I'm mentioning, you need to know how to communicate with spirits. That is going to be your, like literally, your primary um, guide, you could say. Okay, that like to be able to communicate with spirits. Um, these other intelligent um, energies and to allow them to show you aspects of yourself that you need to understand or aspects of reality that you need to understand and uh, potentially certain directions that you need to move in. Um, certain things, once again, certain things you need to know about yourself, certain things you need to know about certain people. The mass collective. I mean, they teach you tons of things. You can imagine these are spiritual intelligences. These are energy fields that have existed for a very long time. And they do play a role in evolution. That's very important to understand. They play a specific role in evolution in regards to helping you develop certain aspects of yourself and helping you understand certain aspects of reality. And they all have their own little properties to be able to do that. Um, but this is what this video is about. Okay, so now that we understand this foundational context of, 
yes, you're going to need to be able to communicate with spirits, okay? And spirits are very important to understand and to be able to allow to guide you in the right direction, okay? Now that we understand this context, this is what we need to understand first, okay? This is the first understanding that we need to come to. Um, obviously, if you don't want to agree with me, by all means, don't believe me. You don't need to, okay? It is what it is. At the end of the day, you know, knowledge is knowledge. And uh, if you take it, you take it. Great. If you don't, great, okay? You know? Um, so here's, here's what you want to know. And, and it's very common, right? I want to say this. It is very common that a lot of people want to start working with spirits, okay? They, like, they want to start going and invoking archangels. They want to go and start invoking demons, okay? And there's not anything that's necessarily wrong with that, okay? I mean, I was the same way. When I first got into this, um, I obviously did some research, and I had to really, before I started summoning spirits and invoking these um these energies i had to study it first to understand like what i was getting myself into and what i was doing um but i i did i studied for a little bit and then i jumped right in and once again the the reason of me mentioning this is because that's very common a lot of people are doing that but there was an aspect of myself that i always had that i see that a lot of other people don't have okay and this aspect of myself that i have and have always had has been what has literally made me successful in all of my occult endeavors. And basically, that aspect of myself is recognizing that I am the I am the being that is the most powerful. So I always viewed myself as the being that was in power in regards to although I was working with archangels and archdemons, although I was working with all these different types of spirits, at the end of the day, I always knew that I was on this path of trying to increase my power, okay? It was always about my evolution. Okay, so if I'm going to work with this spirit, how is this spirit going to help empower me for my evolution? Okay, and this is what has made me successful once again with my occult endeavors. Now, this is the issue or the problem, you could even say the barrier that I'm seeing with a lot of people that are getting into this field, is they start working with spirits, whether the archangels, the archdemons, or any other ones that you want to, you know, bring into the frame. They start forgetting. And I don't even know actually if that's the right word. Maybe they didn't even know in the first place getting into this practice, which is not good. But they don't recognize that they're the ones that are in power. They don't recognize that they're the ones that are supposed to be on this evolutionary journey to reach their highest potential. They literally forget that the reason the occult and the entire initiatory system exists is to literally turn your own spirit and soul into its most powerful form, which is literally, literally, we'll call it your daemon. Some call it the holy guardian angel. Some call it the higher self. This is the most powerful aspect of your occult practices is your own remote viewing body is your own higher self is your own holy guardian angel is your own daemon that is what's most important it is you and it is your spirit and your soul intertwined together and that literally is an entity within itself and that is what's most powerful because that entity that is you and you are it that is the entity that literally links with source it's not any of the archdemons. It's not any of the archangels. It is yours. It is your higher self. It is your holy guardian angel. It is your daemon.
you have the ability to link with source, which means you can link with evolution itself. That is what separates you from any of the other spirits that you may be working with, invoking, talking to, okay? This is very important to understand, very important, because this is what determines if you're going to be successful through your initiatory journey. Because if you don't understand this, then I can guarantee you won't make it. I, I'm just, and this is just being honest, you know, I can guarantee it. And the reality is, is a lot, most people fail. Um, most people fail because there's a lot of false information out there in the first place, but this is one of those things that's like not really talked about too often. Okay. Um, so taking it back, what I'm seeing a lot of is I'm seeing a lot of people worshiping spirits as if the spirit is more powerful than them. And I want to clarify this. Is it true that a spirit could be more powerful than you? I'm going to say this. In one aspect, yes. There very well are spirits, and I'm, I can, I'm literally seeing them manifest all around me right now. There are spirits that are more powerful than you in certain aspects. In regards to the astral, for sure, that I'm sure when you start as a beginner, these spirits are way more fluid with the astral plane. Okay? That's their realm. So yeah, in that regard, they are more powerful than you. But what they don't have is a physical body. What they don't have is the ability to link with source. That's what you have, okay? So when I see a human being that is worshiping a spirit, and let's be, let's be real here. The word worship, the actual definition is, means highly respect. That's not a problem, okay? Worship, that is a good thing, to worship something, uh, especially like a spirit that you're working with. If you're actually going by the definition, if you're highly respecting something that you're working with, and the respect is coming from a place of, you're honoring the fact that that spirit is helping you evolve and increase your power by taking on the powers of the spirit itself, then that is wonderful. That's great. But notice how the word worship has been perverted in our current society where we hear about religions worshiping to the degree where the word worship literally means selling your soul to a, an entity like a religion or um, literally an entity giving your soul up that's not what worship meant that's not what worship means look up the definition right now if you think I'm joking it literally means to highly respect and that's the root of it that's what worship means but it's been perverted so I'm seeing humans people that once again have the highest potential because they are physical beings that can link with source but i'm seeing these people literally selling themselves to these spirits as if the spirit is so much more powerful than them and then them being in hopes that this spirit is going to go out and do all these things for this person. And then they're going to live a life that is lavish, is wonderful and great and blissful and wonderful. They have all the things they want, nice cars, lots of money, tons of sex, whatever it is. And they're selling themselves to the spirit, like counting on this spirit that they are literally treating as if it's more powerful than themselves. And what they're wanting is all of these like low magic things. 
So this in itself is completely perverted. This is inverted, okay? Perverted and inverted. What the fuck? Okay, so when you have a human being that is worshiping a demon, this is very common in my field. It's it's very it's actually embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. But I understand why it happens because I mean there's a lot of uh, misconceptions. I mean, if this isn't a pure sign that there are occult booby traps within this field, or excuse me, booby traps within the occult, if it's not a clear sign when you see people literally giving their souls to arch demons giving give handing their souls to ars goetia demons if that's not enough clarity to see how inverted occult knowledge is then i don't know what else is i really don't but that is to me who's fully initiated through this whole system and has worked with literally almost every one of the Ars Goetia and all the archdemons and uh, worked with many archangels, that's embarrassing. That's like, it's embarrassing to see that. It's, it's like, um, man, it's like seeing, uh, wow, what's the best way to describe that? I mean, it's, can I create an analogy for that? It's literally like begging somebody on the street for a dollar like it's literally that it's that similar it's like you're standing on the side of the street and you're begging people for a dollar because what you want to do with that dollar is buy yourself like a a cheap beer and just drink it and get drunk and waste your time and you're just standing on that street begging for it like you're it's like you're working a job for just that little amount of cash just so you can waste it on some like alcohol or some form of drug. It's like that embarrassing to see people giving their souls to these spirits that will willingly take them. Willingly. But to just see the, the human not able to understand their nature and not able to understand what their potential is, that's what's embarrassing. And if that's, once again, if that's not a clear sign of how many booby traps there are within the occult field and just in our society in general, in the mass collective in general, I don't know what the fuck is. I mean, if I've been a personal trainer, right? And you go, like, if you're a personal trainer or you're in the fitness field, you know what I'm talking about. When you go to the gym, you see tons of people working out, doing exercises, using improper form that are literally doing more damage than they are good. Like, I've been a personal trainer. I'm certified as a personal trainer still. And I would see, when I was working at Equinox, I would see people exercising doing it completely wrong, literally causing more harm than good. So they're wasting precious energy, destroying their, um, their, their, uh, li their, their ligaments, destroying their muscle tissues, like not in a good way, but like using the machines and using the, the weights the wrong way that it's like screwing up their bone structures. And that's exactly what I'm seeing in regards to the occult field. And this happens for all types of fields. Once you start to master a field, you really see what's going on within that field. Um, so yeah, so in regards to people worshiping spirits as if the spirit is higher than themselves, you've got that fucked up. Because if you are approaching these spirits that really can influence you. I mean, and they're very important. I want to make, make it very clear that working with spirits is very important, but you're only going to get value from it if you're coming at it from the right intent, the right intentions. And your intent should always be on your own evolution. Recognize that you are doing this. You're communicating with this spirit. You're communicating with that spirit for your personal growth, spiritual self-development, your personal evolution. Because if that's not your intent, if you're if you're starting off especially and your intent is I want this, I want this, I want this, I want money, I want cars, I want sex, I want control, 
Guess what? Guess what? You're going to be that same fuckhead on the corner of the street begging for a fucking dollar just to drink a beer or just to buy some marijuana or whatever. Get a hit. But you're going to be doing that with spirits. You're going to be using a, a, an Ars Goetia demon, giving your soul over to it, hoping and praying that the more you worship this spirit, the more it's going to bring you what you want. When in reality, you're just a fool because you can have the entire Ars Goetia serve you. You can control the entire Ars Goetia. You can control the entire uh, arch, all the arch demons. You can literally control them. And that's the purpose of getting into the occult field because when you get to that level, now you're controlling your reality completely. Okay? So don't sell yourself short. And the message of this video, I mean, obviously you're going to do what you do. At the end of the day, and I've made this clear in many videos, I am a black magician. So when you're selling your soul to a spirit, it's going to bring that spirit back to Lucifer. And I've taken, I've put on Lucifer's crown, and I've literally embodied Lucifer. So that soul comes to me. So if that's what you want to do, please, by all means. Because there are magicians like myself that have fully initiated and have gone through Thamiel and have been crowned with Lucifer's crown. So all that worship you're doing to all the Ars Goetia or any other of the arch demons, giving your soul to them as if they're going to do things for you in regards to your, your, your life's potential. I'm not saying that, you know, you can't use these spirits to do things for you. That's not what I'm saying. If you're giving your soul to a spirit, that's your purpose that I'm talking about. If you're relying on a spirit to be your purpose by selling yourself to that spirit and thinking that it's going to take you to where you need to go and you're putting all your purpose into that and you're hoping it's just going to, I don't know what you're hoping at that point. I mean, it's most likely because you want materialistic things, low magic types of things. Once again, if that's what you're doing, you're screwing yourself, but taking it back. Also, if that's what you're doing, you know, that energy will come back to me. So if that's what you want to do, then by all means, okay? Because once again, there are cultists like myself that will very willingly, will take that energy. And I do all the time. I mean, there's tons of people that are doing that. But also, you know, with the source aspect of myself, I have to mention of what's going on, right? I have to say what I'm seeing and I have to explain it in a way so that you understand so that you don't fall into that trap. And hopefully if you're a follower of my channel, you're going to recognize what I'm speaking about and you're going to recognize the value behind it. Remember, it's your intention that is very important. You need to make sure your intention is always on your own evolution, always on your own development of your own power. When you go to work with another spirit, the first thing you should check within yourself is, is this going to help me towards my highest potential? That is the first thing that you should check in with. Because if you get all caught up in wanting, you know, trying to get spirits to do low magic for you and get all these material things, I'm telling you, you're setting yourself up for strengthening your self-importance and strengthening your ego. And that's not going to really be too valuable, you know, going into your initiations. And qu quite frankly, it's going to waste your time. Low magic is powerful and it is very important, but it should be focused on primarily once you've finished your initiations. Once you've, once you've unlocked your soul, once you can have full-on communion with your daemon, once you've crossed the abyss and you've got, you know, you've gone to um, Thamiel and now you can travel through the whole tree. This is when you get in the realm of being able to really use low magic and, and just completely create your kingdom. But um, otherwise, I, I just don't see much of a purpose of, you know, selling yourself to another spirit. You know, I don't see any purpose in that whatsoever. I mean, like, Obviously, there's going to be people that do that, and that's just a part of evolution. But, you know, once again, if you're a follower of my channel, then 
you probably don't want to be that person. Let somebody else do that, right? It's always going to happen. There's always going to be people that are going to fuck up. And there's no point in trying to convince them. There's no point in trying to like change them. Let them fuck up. That's that's a part of evolution. You know, that's also another aspect that a lot of people forget is like, you know, when someone's evolving to high degrees, they're also to balance that out. There's got to be somebody suffering. And this is a fact, okay? This is just how um, energies work and there's, you know, it's different polarities. So as someone's evolving, there's always going to be somebody else that's suffering, okay? So with all the people that are doing it wrong, you know, don't try to go out and like convince people or whatever. The right people, you know, the right people will follow the, the wisdom and they'll take the knowledge, Okay, the right people will. It's like all intent based. So that means like if you're watching this video, you're meant to come across this. Okay, now it's up to you if you apply it or not. But I'm pretty sure most of you are probably going to apply it. That's why you're even watching the video. But think about all the people that are not watching the video. Think about all the people that are working with demonic forces or angelic forces and they're just selling their souls to these spirits as if that's going to get them somewhere, as if it's going to do something for them. It's not. It's it literally, it's not all they're doing is, um, draining themselves of energy and vital, li literally their purpose. Like your purpose <laughs> is valuable. Your soul is your purpose. Okay. That's where your purpose comes from. So your soul is valuable. And I'm telling you this because I know this, I'm not, this is like, this is something I know for a fact. Um, and having a very, strong understanding of Lucifer, the one who harnesses souls, you know, this is part of where my perspective is coming from in with the subject. So trust me, I know about souls. I know how valuable they can be. And yeah, you know, when people want to sell their souls to spirits, you know, there's other people that can use that soul energy to continue, you know, creating their kingdom or continue evolving. Um, but the fact of the matter is you don't want to be the person doing it. You don't want to be the person selling your soul so someone else can evolve. Remember, like, you know, you don't want to be that person. You know, there always will be that person, but you don't want to be that person. But yes, your soul is very valuable. And the entire journey of high magic is um, uh, reabsorbing your soul, literally reclaiming your soul and then reshaping it. Okay. Reshaping your soul. And then that's when you get an alignment with your true self once you reclaim that. And then this is around the time when your daemon gets formed, when you get in touch with your holy guardian angel, when you connect with your higher self and you understand that's you and you're it. And you're like, whoa, this is who I am. Wow, I've been separated for a long time in my life. I forgot I was so disconnected. This is, I'm, and I'm speaking from personal experience. When, when I went through my initiations and then I got in alignment with my true self, when I reabsorbed a massive aspect of my soul that was fragmented in the cliff off, when I reclaim that, and it was specifically it was specifically when I went to cross the abyss in the cliff off and Karanzan devoured my self-importance and my ego. And I was left with nothing but my soul. I was left with nothing but just that. What is my purpose? And that was all I could follow. There was nothing else. There was like, no, like, yeah, I'm going to go hang out tonight or I'm going to call some friends or I'm going to do that. That was wiped away from me. So I had to literally spend like six months just sitting with my soul. And that's when I really absorbed it. That's when it transformed. And that's when I really became aware of like, holy fuck, I was so separated from myself up until that point where Karanzan devoured my ego and my self-importance. And that's not, it was not not a comfortable experience. I mean, like I had a lot of self-importance. I did. I had a strong ego and it got ripped from me. Thankfully, because I always trusted my purpose. I always trusted my soul. I always trusted my intuition and my intuition told me you better fucking let go or else like it was like my insanity was on the line. 
And that was not, it was a scary feeling. And I fucking, I let it go. I completely let, let it go. And, um, yeah, as I said, that was the, that was a huge moment when I really came into my true self, like fully. And I recognized it. And when that happens to somebody, you look back and you're like, holy shit, I was so fragment, fragmented up until this point. And, um, you know, taking it back to the, the purpose of this video, it's like there are people that are just selling themselves to, to entities and to spirits and they're not making any evolutionary progress. They're just standing still, completely still. And they're wondering why their life is shit. They're wondering why is nothing changing? Why is nothing going good? Does the spirit like me anymore? Does it? And they come up with weird. It's like this is where this is this is where this occult idea of like oh yeah this spirit's my friend and I do this with the spirit or this spirit turned on me and it starts. This is weird. This is not healthy. Okay, these ideas, this this mindset of of people like communicating with spirits and thinking spirits are telling them these things, that's not healthy, okay? The intent and the backbone should be evolutionary. You should be working with these spirits so that you can be led in the right directions and gain their attributes or gain their uh, their powers, um, allow them to guide you to certain and into certain circumstances that allow you to evolve. But then, you know, you get people that are selling themselves and then now these spirits are telling them like weird shit, like gossiping, like what? Like that is, that's not okay. I mean, once again, when I say it's not okay, you do what you do. Okay. But I'm telling you right now, if you want to hear a serious perspective on this entire, you know, occult field and, and initiation and really developing your highest, uh, really developing yourself to reach your highest potential. You don't want to get to the point where you start thinking spirits are gossiping and you don't want to get to a point where this spirit's gossiping with this spirit. That's fucking high school. That's weird to me. That's weird. I don't do that. I don't deal with spirits like that. I don't, I don't allow my mind to have spirits do things like that. In my reality, all of them serve me. Okay. And the ones that are most prominent will make themselves clear and I will have high levels of respect for the ones that come forth and need to guide me and I will allow them to guide me. I'll be receptive. And then when I gain what I need to gain, then I'm on to the next step. And that spirit may step back away from my reality and then the new one will come and so on and so forth until I get to a point where I don't, I no longer need to even work with spirits because the entire process is developing what your daemon, your own spirit. Okay. Your own spirit and soul meshed together. Your own holy guardian angel is an entity. Okay. It's, it's, they call it holy guardian angel, but it's holy guardian angel demon. It is both angelic is a certain aspect of your energy field. Demonic is a certain aspect of your energy field. Now mesh them together. That's what it is. That's your higher self. Your higher self is also your lower self. Once again, the higher self would be the angelic aspect. The lower self would be the demonic aspect. That's why I say the daemon. That's why I refer to the daemon. Because it's the day moon. It makes sense. Sun, night. Soul, spirit. Spirit, soul. That is what's powerful. And that, within time, as you develop yourself... That will become your main guide. That will be the one thing that you actually communicate. Excuse me. <laughs> Look, my body's confirming. That will be the thing that you communicate with the most. And not only that, but that will be the main thing that guides you and protects you. Your own daemon. Okay. And this is like, I don't know why this is so not talked about. I It really shows that not a lot of people have really achieved this level of, uh, awareness. I mean, that shows that there must be a lot of failed attempts to go through the initiatory system. And once again, my channel is geared around exposing a lot of these booby traps. And I'm telling you right now for anyone listening to my channel, I am telling you right now, 
the majority of occultists and people that get into the occult field fall into these booby traps. Okay, the majority of them. The people that don't fall into them are the ones that listen to their intuition over everything else. Okay, if you got involved with any other of these mainstream occult orders, the Golden Dawn, the Freemasons, the OTO, the Rosicrucians, etc., you were fucked. Okay, you messed up. And that's something that you have to accept. I mean, and I've explained many times. I've explained many times why that fucks you up. It's all programmed to destroy your energy body and invert you so that when you go to do your initiations, you're working against yourself and you don't even know you are. Okay, everything about it is inverted. The directionary system, the pillars on the tree, you're you're thinking you're working in universe A, but you're dumping yourself into universe B, which is pulling universe A into universe B, not transitioning your energy field properly. So that means that you're now in the realm of subjectivity, but you're objective. And now all those demonic feminine forces are now feeding off of you. And that's especially what the Ars Goetia want because the Ars Goetia are programmed to take the male principle away from you. So of course they want an objective person being locked into the subjective realm, universe B, because then they're going to rip away your male principle, tell you're nothing, tell you're shelled, and then they shell you in the clip bot. And they give all that male principle to the feminine entities within the clip bot and the tunnels of set, which uplines to me because I've developed all their archetypal abilities. And there's not a lot of people that understand that. Okay? They're not. They're not. And it's all simply from just copying initiations out of these occult orders, ritual books, all that, all that pain, all that trauma, all that hellizing off of one little thing, just copying these people. And obviously the reason why there's all these booby traps is because that's intentional. You know, for the real occultists that are the, the inner Jewish rabbis, the Sanhedrins, the real Jews that run the world, if you, like, if you know, you know. There are real high-level Jewish people that are into Kabbalah that have the actual documented information from Egypt of how Kabbalah works, and they're using the proper tree. So with their awareness and their desire to control the world, they're obviously going to feed the inverted information of the Kabbalah to these outer occult orders. So it actually started with feeding it to their own. Uh, the, Jew, the, the Jews themselves feed it to the... So there's the inner Jewish rabbis, which you could think of as the Sanhedrins. Then there's the outer Jewish rabbis, which is just all the other Jews. And they look at them as in their words, goyim, which means cattle. And uh, it all started with this one Jew that was with the outer orders, so he didn't have the real tree, and he spread it to somebody uh, that was a part of the Golden Dawn. and Or not even a part of the, I don't believe it was a part of the Golden Dawn, but he spread it to somebody, and then they formed the Golden Dawn off of his knowledge, which was inverted from the first place. So that's why, you know, it was very intentional. And the knowledge that I'm sharing with you is the real tree. And I'm, I, the reason why I know this is because I'm studying from somebody that understands the real Kabbalah. And he gets real results. And he's been in the field a lot longer than I have. He's like in his 60s. And uh, I resonate. I, I Not only do I just resonate with it, but I, I see it from experience. I know. I know it's, it's, it's true. Like I have direct experience with it. Okay, so just keep that in mind. You know, that's the reason why there's a lot of weird shit going on in the occult field. Remember, this is a practice that is very, this is very sacred. This is like what our ancestors, all of our ancestors at some point in time understood this practice. And it was always primarily meant to evolve. Always. That's the whole purpose of it. So don't allow yourself to be tricked or to think 
that you need to give your soul or your purpose away to a certain spirit. Only if you're watching my channel. Everybody else can do that. I don't care. Um, but don't be tricked, you know, because then you're just going to stay still. And you're not going to move. And guess what? You may not just stay still. You may go down lower. And the lower you go, the harder it is to get back out. Okay, that's a fact. And I'm no different. Remember, that I'm no different. I was shelled the fuck up. When I got, when I first went through my initiations, I didn't know what the fuck, like, I went through the Sephiroth without even knowing about Kabbalah, but I knew I was initiating. That's, it was so strange. Like, my intuition was telling me, and I, I, I even told, like, I had friends. Uh, I was going to personal training school, and my initiation started for the from the Sephiroth uh, after I had completely sacrificed my old life. I mean, I literally moved away from my my hometown and sacrificed everything. Like I, I, I left everybody and I just went out by myself to Florida and I went to schooling there and I just intuitively knew I was initiating through something, which is weird because I don't know why I said that or I knew that. I was literally in school and I had friends and I said, bro, because school was not easy. It was a personal training school and it was tough. It was tough. And I remember my friend was having a hard time and he was thinking about giving up. And I was like, I remember I said specifically, I said, bro, we're initiating. We have to do this in order to like initiate. We have to finish this. It's an initiation. I remember saying that and I didn't even know anything about the tree. I didn't know anything about Kabbalah. I didn't know anything. Um, and then it was midway through school when I, when I actually came across information of the occult, still didn't know about Kabbalah though, still didn't know about the tree, but I came across information of spirits and, you know, you know, what the occult is and things of that nature, the occult realm and stuff. And, um, yeah, when I came across the information of how to initiate myself into clip off, um, after I had finished, uh, schooling, which was me finishing my initiations through the Sephiroth, uh, then I approached the clip off and shit, I mean, going in there, like going in there, this is the thing. When I look back three years ago, when I went into the clip off for the first time and I look at the person that I was going into that beginning of that initiation, it shocks me. It literally shocks me. And if you want to know, if you want to know what I'm talking about and see real proof of it, scroll down, go through my channel and scroll all the way down. Go to my oldest videos. You're going to see how different I am. You're literally going to see how different I am. I was a different person. And when I was in the, 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 the clip off in the beginning stages, I mean, leading all the way up towards the end, I was shell big time. Like I could feel it. I knew I was, I could just feel it shelled. Like it just, like I was on this journey of trying to really uncover my soul. And that's what it was. I mean, that's what the initiation is supposed to be. And I knew I was, but when I had that moment, when I finally crossed the abyss with Qurans on and I did it successfully. And I, when I, and this was in 2020 when coronavirus broke out, when I had that moment, when I recognized I had found my true self and I'm telling you it was not easy crossing the abyss and I had spent a lot of time in a dark room just in silence like I was just it was like loot I mean it's like losing your identity it's not an easy process you have to let go of your self-importance you have to let go of your ego and all you're left there with is your soul and you're left with source evolution so I spent a lot of time just sitting in a dark room, just like trying to understand what was happening to me and just recognizing the more I tried to understand, the harder it, it was to even intellectualize what was happening. So I just had to feel. And the more I did that, the more I did that, the more I activated that source within me and the more I activated that source within me the stronger my soul became and it then once I had finished the crossing 
I started regaining awareness of my new sense of self, which is not an ego-based sense of self, but a soul-based sense of self, an evolution-based sense of self. And when I, when I recognized that that was my true self, that was big. And now that I look back, it's like, what the fuck was wrong with me? It's like, what, it's like, what happened to me to make me think that's who I used to be? And then I look at who I am now and I'm like, I feel way, way more whole. I feel like I'm me. I really feel like this is me. This is who I am, the way I express myself. Um, the things that I say, it all feels in alignment with who I truly am. Before the crossing, before all of that, I didn't feel like me. I did not feel like me though. The reason why I got into this entire deep level of occult magic and initiation was because I didn't feel like me. And that, that did not sit right with me. And I've always had a warrior, a very powerful warrior spirit. So I did, I was willing, ready and able to do whatever it took to figure out what was wrong and how I can correct it. And now I'm sitting here and I'm explaining what it was. I was shelled big time. And I had to go through hell to reabsorb those fragmented aspects of my soul and develop all the powers of the um, arch demons and the demonic forces as well. That's a byproduct, which is awesome. Um, and now I finished. And now I'm going through some other initiations in regards to the final. It's not over yet for me. It's not It's not over yet. I'm, I'm in the final stages. Um, but it's, it's all set in stone. So like in regards to the astral, experience it's done i've completed i know like actually i know what i'm supposed to do and i've done it and it's already a timeline that is 100 percent going to manifest but i'm just going through the physical motions now and when that finally manifests i'm not going to speak about it right now but when it does manifest that's going to be when i start completely uh building my kingdom where all my energy goes into more so low magic controlling my empire, building my empire, adding this, removing that, things of that nature. I'm not saying that I'm not doing that now, but it's that's going to be my primary focus in the future. Um, but yeah, so other than that, I think that's going to wrap it up. This video is definitely long enough. Um, remember, the moral of the story is the whole purpose of all of this is to evolve, to reach your highest potential. You are your most powerful entity, spiritual being, soul in spirit. You and your daemon, your higher self, your holy guardian angel, is what is the most powerful aspect within you because that is what has the opportunity to link with source, which is evolution, which controls all of this. So when you're working with spirits, just remember that you're doing it to empower yourself and to further evolve. And as you go farther into your evolutionary process, you will get to a point where you start to recognize that you can now control all different types of spirits. And then you will be able to use all the low magic that you want. Okay, so once again, this is not a path of reaching spiritual enlightenment, touching source, and then dissolving from the world, separating from the world. We're not, we're not Buddhas. This is not Buddhist philosophy that I'm preaching. This is, this is uh, left-hand path, black brother, uh, black brotherhood at its finest. You know, using the entirety of the lighter aspects of evolution and the darker aspects of evolution. The Sephiroth and the Klipoth, the universe A and the universe B aspects, and using both of them to create the reality that you truly want to live. I mean, the whole goal is to create your kingdom, to create a world that you want to live in, okay? But there are requirements to be able to do that. There are cosmic laws, and you have to link with those cosmic laws, and that's what achieving source is. So once again, that's going to leave it there. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. 
Also hit the notification bell and the subscribe button, okay, if you enjoyed the video. And I love to see my subscribers shoot through the roof. Um, so if you would like to gain access to exclusive content, definitely check out uh, my Patreon, which is going to be in the description. So you're going to see a little drop down right over there. Um, click that drop down. You're going to see a link at the very top, and it says my Patreon right next to it. Um, so you can click that link. And what I have on my Patreon is exclusive content in regards to actual occult practices that I'm performing on camera, and then I'm teaching you how to perform them yourself. For example, I have a video on how to do an invocation, which is literally communicating with a spirit, just like we we're talking about in this video, using the proper techniques, okay? Um, and then once again, the intent is important. So you wanna make sure that you know why you're communicating with the spirit. You know, you wanna communicate with it so that you can take on its power and that you can be receptive to its guidance so that it can show you where to go or what to focus on or maybe pull you into certain situations or circumstances that could benefit you on your journey, okay? So I teach you how to do that and then I demonstrate it, me actually doing it on my Patreon. So that increases your psychic power, that increases your psychic senses, that also increases your psychic protection, okay? So that's some of the content that I have on uh, my Patreon. The other bit is gonna be in regards to Kabbalah, where I break down all the spheres on the tree itself so that you can gain a full understanding of what initiation really is, okay? That is very valuable. This is the roadmap to evolution. This is what all the highest level occultists in the entire world are using to literally control the world around you. They understand Kabbalah, and I'm telling you this. And the ones that are controlling the world understand the real Kabbalah, okay? So what I, what I explain is the spheres. I explain the uh, spirits associated with them. And then at the very end, I break down my own personal experience having initiated through the spheres myself. And I'm talking about the Sephiroth and the Klippoth. I have all of that, okay? So that's going to be on my Patreon. There's four tiers altogether. In order to gain access to this exclusive content, you have to at least be a tier two. In order to be a tier two, it literally costs $9.95 a month. And if you do the math, that will literally come out to less than a dollar a day. So there really is no reason why you shouldn't be able to afford that with the value that I have on there. And that is a fact. Okay. Um, as you go up in tiers, the benefits increase. Uh, the highest tier is going to be tier four, and that is an actual service that I perform for you in regards to changing your energy field to go from universe A into a universe B type of energy field, which pulls in chaos. It sucks in chaos so that it can fuel you and give you energy, okay? Rather than giving energy to chaos and then you losing energy, it's going to do the reverse, okay? So that's going to be tier four. It's called Vampire Service. You can go check that out for yourself. And with that being said, I would like to give a special shout out to all of the top tier members uh, that have that service. I have their names mentioned below in the parentheses. So huge shout out to all of you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, next shout out I would like to give is to all of my Patreon members in general. I highly appreciate all of you and huge shout out to uh, you as well. And then a third shout out to all of my YouTube subscribers. I appreciate all of you as well, and a huge shout out. Okay, with that being said, now let's take a look at the second link below in the description. That's gonna take you to where you can book a tarot card reading with me. Um, the link says square appointments. Um, so yeah, basically with the tarot card reading, what I can do is I can literally locate you where you're at right now in regards to your own spiritual evolutionary journey. So I connect the entire reading back to Kabbalah. So I use three cards to do it. I do a present, near future, and long-term future. And I break down the cards in a very deep way. It's not just a traditional reading. It's a reading that's also a little bit subjective where I can really tune into my intuition and I can tell you things that my daemon wants to let you know. And I'm not holding back. I'm telling you exactly what I feel like you need to know. Um, to give you the most authentic reading I can. And then once again, I connect it back to the tree. So I, for every reading that I've done so far, which is in the nature of 50, um, I've been able to pinpoint where people are located at. And it's been extremely valuable for people, especially the ones that are a part of the Patreon and are studying the tree. 
Uh, it's after they get their reading, I can give them homework so that they can go back and study the spheres and then go to my YouTube playlist and study the archetypal pathways in regards to the tarot so that they can see where they're actually located. So you can expect where to go, uh, you know, in your uh, near future and long term future. Okay, very valuable. So once again, if you would like to book that reading, check out the second link below. That's where you can do it. Other than that, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.